It really all started here on a picture postcard afternoon on the first day of 2010. In this stadium, so celebrated and historic, the champions of the Pac-10 and the champions of the Big Ten. So much drama had led to this, a destruction of USC, a dramatic come from behind at Arizona, and the elation of the biggest civil war ever. Outright champions of the Pac-10. But on this day, it was not meant to be. But on this day, with this feeling, this started. Certainly this team faced an off-season of challenges, but this team, led by a genius innovator and motivator, never looked back, always forward, each and every day, with the desire and drive that only championship teams possess. A team so clearly focused at every moment, so focused that it became so simple to accomplish just one thing, win the day. And when the Ducks took to the field on the opening day, on a spectacular new playing surface and surrounding, there was no question that they were ready. It certainly didn't take long. A first quarter and first half that must have been a blur for the Lobos defense. Thomas, wait for the snap, got it. And a hand it off. Porter pops it into the end zone right up the middle. And a nice handoff from Thomas because he left it in there for quite a while before he let it go. First down at the 30. Thomas ready again. We'll run the play and we'll pull it back to throw. Down the middle, wide open. Paulson, David, touchdown, David Paulson. Beautiful pass and his first touchdown as a duck. With a quick 14 to nothing lead, sophomore Kenyon Barner started to steal the show. Starting in place of LaMichael James, Barner very clearly reminded fans to not forget for a moment about him. Barner to his right on the snap, turn and give it to, that's a big hole, Barner 10, outside five, are you kidding me? Kenyon Barner saying LaMichael who? Thomas ready again. Sends mail in motion, going to give it to Barner. Going to go outside. He's got the room. He's got the corner. He's got a touchdown. Kenyon Barner's having a game here in the first quarter. Thomas on second and 10 at the 42 of New Mexico on the stamp. Give it to Barner. Go up the middle. Nice hole. First down. Look out. Hey, he's going to score. No doubt. 10 5. Oh, man, is he having a ball game. Kenyon Barner. The Ducks just don't waste any time. Thomas with a snap back to throw. Time. A little dump screen over the middle. He's got it and it'll be a big one. 40 behind a pile and Barner's going to go to the 50. Gets outside. He's gone. Barner is gone. 10. Stroll to the end zone. Touchdown Oregon. When he was done midway through just the second quarter it was already 42 to nothing. 147 yards rushing and five touchdowns. And just as fans were buzzing about the spectacular performance, back to receive a punt went sophomore Cliff Harris for the first time in 2010. As Scare will get his foot into the ball, booms one. Way high, it's not Barner this time, it's Cliff Harris. Harris with a catch at the 40, sidestep the first man, gonna go outside, gonna block. He's in the 40, downfield 30, one gotta beat the punter. 20, straight arm, 10, touchdown Cliff Harris. The offensive lineman have got to start saying, give me the ball, I want to score too. And really before anyone had a chance to process what the speedy sophomore had just done, back he went again. Harris is deep. Scare. Good snap. Hits the punt away. Wobbly. Harris going to come up. Can he make the first guy miss? Yep. Gets by again. And he's inside at the 50. Off to the races and tripped up but still on his feet at the 40. Turns the corner at the 20. He is going to score again. Cliff Harris just did it again. 59 to nothing. At halftime, Barner's five touchdowns tied the modern school record. Harris's return set a new record for punt returns. And maybe it'll never be broken. When the mop-up was done, the Ducks had a school record 720 yards of offense and a nifty 10 yards per point, 72 to zero win. And there's no question, even though the Ducks would play many, if not all, more talented teams, it sure felt like the start of something special. On the road to Tennessee into a spectacular setting of Neyland Stadium, SEC country, the tradition of the Volunteers is felt throughout Knoxville. And the Vols were certainly ready to play, driving on their first possession and getting three. Then picking up a turnover on the kickoff, getting another three. 
before the Ducks had even run a play, the first quarter was nearly over and Oregon trailed six to nothing. Then the heat crackled. A tremendous storm sent both teams to the locker room. As the lightning and thunder rolled around the stadium and fans took cover from a severe storm, underneath the stadium, the Ducks stewed. As fans frolicked on the field and were chased down by security, the Duck players refocused, reset, and when they took the field after an hour and 10 minute delay, it was a different game. Second down and 10. Thomas on the snap, gonna roll left to throw. Dumps it out, it's caught, and still on his feet, down the sideline, 30. Cut it back inside of the 25, finally down inside of the 20 to the 19 yard line. And Darren Thomas is surveying the field, he's looking around. Second down and six. Thomas on the snap to throw again. Comes a blitz, they pick it up, he throws it down, it is Paulson, touchdown Oregon! David Paulson, when he makes a grab, it's a big one, and that is six points, and Oregon is right back in this ball game and an extra point away from tying it up with a minute four left in the half. Now tied at halftime, the Ducks came out and provided some lightning of their own. That's where Michael beside Thomas, and here's first down from the Duck 28 on the handoff, and it'll be LaMichael trying to get it outside. He'll go left now. He's got a block. If he can get a little corner, he does. First down, 40, 45, 50 down the sideline. Cuts it back inside. Now back outside, still on his feet at the 20. They go to the 10. He is going to dive into the end zone! The Michael James with a world-class effort! It was certainly a Heisman-like signature moment. Maybe it came a bit too early to help in the Heisman race, but certainly a highlight that reintroduced James to the country. The 72-yard run put the Ducks on top, and then the defense put it out of reach. Seems to go from the shot yet. Trips to the right. And Oku sets up to his left to block. The snap back to throw. Pressure comes. The throw is out and it's picked. And it's going to be a six if he's got the speed. At the 40, 30. Can he have one? Sims cuts inside of him and will go to the five. Touchdown, Oregon on the pick six. And you could see it when the ball left. With the momentum, it then became methodical. The Ducks controlling the line of scrimmage against the Vols defense, pounding away, using the clock, and then Darren Thomas going to work. Michael to his right. Darren, snap. Can a little bootleg right. Wants to throw it. Goes deep. He's got him down there and he threw it, but he caught it. Touchdown. What a grab by Lavoisier. Two and A. He threw it late and the defender overran the ball. At that point, as the Oregon defense continued to stuff the Tennessee offense, the game was clearly out of reach, especially with one last exclamation point on Oregon's trip to Knoxville. Good snap, no rush to speak of. Nice punt, very high, spiral, almost turned it over, all the way back to the 21 and a chance for the return. Barner right up the middle and here he goes! The punt of the beat, outside at the 40. They are not gonna catch Kenyon Barner, 10-5. Put it in the books. Kenyon Barner shows once again he is among the best in the nation. The final, 48 to 13, depth. Special teams, LaMichael, Harris, Barner, and now Thomas. The personality and leadership on this team starts to take shape as the Ducks head back west, climbing the national poles. A drizzly day in late September had no chance to dampen the spirits of nearly 60,000 fans. They were here at Autzen, forming what would be the 70th consecutive sellout. Of course, they saw the debut of another new helmet, this one with the team motto, Win the Day, actually on the center stripe of the carbon lid. This one was more of a celebration, an expectation of a rout that in fact did come to fruition. Thomas ready again, and the snap and handed off LaMichael, first down, and there he goes! Nobody's going to catch him! LaMichael James straight up the field, great blocking, touchdown Oregon! LaMichael in the backfield on the left of Darren Thomas on the snap. Back to throw again, little play fake, looks downfield, throws, got a wide open, caught, Mail's turning, they're going to try to get it upfield, 25-20, foot race, got a block, Jeffrey Mail is going to score, and LaMichael James, I think, is the guy that sprung him. Paulson, LT, and Drew Davis, and here again to throw, they're going to go to the fade route to Mail, and he got it, touchdown Oregon, Jeffrey over the top of the cornerback, Mail went up over to Sean Shedd, and just 
picked the ball out of the air. Here's Thomas again. They're ready to play. The downs markers are not even set yet. Given right up to middle. There's another big hole, and there's another score for Michael. He's going to go touchdown right up the middle. Here is second down to throw. Thomas, open, catch, touchdown. <laughs> well, you just said he's in there. There's Daryl Hawkins. Two timeouts remaining. Here's Thomas Ruddy on second down and goal from the eight-yard line. On the snap, back to throw. Looks, throws to the end zone, and it is caught this time. Touchdown. And that is going to be the first touchdown catch from Malachi Lewis this year. 45 to nothing at halftime against the Vikings, who played extremely hard but were just outmanned. LaMichael James went for 227 yards in the game, and Darren Thomas gained some valuable experience, throwing for four touchdowns, two of them to emerging star Jeff Mayo. With 528 yards on the ground, the Ducks were able to dispatch the Vikings 69 to nothing with 670 yards of total offense. It also provided valuable time for certain backups to get live game action, and for new players to start to emerge, like Josh Huff, who scored his first touchdown for the Ducks, the first of what likely will be many over his promising career. In the end, the three-game stretch proved to be the perfect setup for this season, at home to start breaking in a new quarterback, a great challenge on the road in front of an amazing crowd to create experience and poise, and then back home in a game everyone expected Oregon to win, but a game with everyone on the roster able to play. In a sense, the non-conference schedule did just what it needed to do, prepare a young quarterback, integrate some young members of the secondary, get Oregon's running backs untracked, and to keep everyone focused and healthy. Now, at 3-0, the team's mission becomes more clear, even more focused, as they enter Pac-10 play at Arizona State. At Tennessee, the Ducks were tested early, but this week in Tempe, Arizona, the challenges were at a different level. Better team, 100 degrees, and a packed an opener on the road with the upstart Sun Devils with something to prove. The Ducks had won three straight in Tempe, but from the start, it was clear this would be a battle. Great on the snap, give it to Lewis again, goes outside and got the first down, and he's down the sideline. 35, 20, he is at the five, touchdown Arizona State. Oregon has played back and forth games before against the Sun Devils. Here's Thomas on second down and eight after a two yard pickup. Two receivers out to the right, Meal. One of those, and maybe LT, and here's LaMichael going outside, turn the corner, he's gonna get a first down, oh, he's gonna score! He's at the 10, he is touchdown Oregon! 40 yards on the run, and once he got the corner, there was no doubt because he's got the speed that you better be faster than he is or you're not going to catch him. This one had all the makings of a shootout, and as ASU started what would be a record-setting offensive day, the Ducks, even though they were giving up yards on D, started picking up some points. And here's three on third and long in his own 20. And a snap straight drop to throw. Pressure comes, hit as he throws. It is intercepted. Boyette might. Boyette will score. Touchdown, Oregon. John Boyette has three. Was just decked as he let go of the ball, and it might have been Kenny Rowe again. With Oregon in the lead now, it seemed to set up as either feast or famine for Stephen Threat and the Sun Devils. After a 12-play drive and a touchdown to Mike Willie, a Steven Weber field goal and a quick strike to Kerry Taylor, the Devils were up 24 to 14 with just three minutes to go in the half. At that point, beyond the Boyette interception, the Duck defense had not found the answer to what the Devils were doing. But the Oregon offense did. Thomas, far to his left. Thomas on the snap, going to keep it, wants to throw back. Into the end zone, it is caught by Jeff Mill, and that's a touchdown. A diving catch, and he must have gone down on the ball. He's a little slow getting up. That's a great grab, and boy, that certainly will make up for maybe one a little earlier. Then, after forcing a quick punt, the offense, with just one more minute in the half and 80 yards away from the end zone, did what they so famously do. Minute three remaining, Ducks at their own 35. Thomas to throw again, pressure comes. See, lets it go, way downfield. He's got Paulson, he's got it. If he can get it down, he'll go inside the 15, to the 10, in out of bounds, at the four yard line. David Paulson reaches out and makes a wide receiver type reception. James to the right of Thomas, left hash mark. 
Thomas waits for the snap, now looks to the sideline. They see what the defensive is, the alignment, and then they call the play. Thomas ready. Thomas, snap. Rolling left option. Going to keep, going to score! Darren Thomas wasn't even close. Arizona State did not have it defended at all. They thought it was going to be LaMichael up the middle. 80 yards, 24 seconds to end the half. Looking back, it might have been one of the biggest Oregon drives of the year. On the road, in front of a wild crowd, grabbing the lead back 28-24 to in the final minutes of the half. Plenty of doubt filtered into the Sun Devil Stadium crowd, and quite possibly the locker room too. With the lead, the Ducks turned methodical on both sides of the ball. After an exchange of punts with the lead and the ball, Oregon moves near midfield. Thomas, Bonder set up to his left this time. Thomas on the snap, going to throw it again. Pump fake, wants to go deep. He's got Huff wide open. He's got it, and he will score at the 10, at the 5. That's a touchdown. Pump fake, Josh Huff went deep, and he was wide open. It was Josh Huff's second Oregon touchdown, and all of a sudden, the Ducks had an 11-point lead. Still, the Sun Devils continued to move the football, but the Ducks continued to be opportunistic, and this one turned into a touchdown. 5.08 left in the third. Three on first down, back to throw, swings it out. Ball dropped, and it it is a... No, they're not having blown the whistle yet. It's, it's going to be called a lateral, and Oregon's picked it up and scored. It's called a lateral. No whistle blew, and they're going to pick it up and say... And Chip says, kick the extra point now, boys. Get out there, and the extra point team is ready, and Arizona State has nobody on the field. From down 14-24 to 24 in the second to up, 42 to 24 in the third. That's what this team does. A burst of overwhelming offense, special teams and defense taking control. And even after ASU scored to make it 42 to 31, and even after the officials incorrectly stopped a fumble recovery return that would have been a touchdown, Oregon was able to manage the final quarter on offense and come up with big play after big play on defense. First, Talmadge Jackson gets involved. Three surveys the defense and ready on first down at the Duck 20. Back to throw again. Looks over the middle toward the end zone. Wide open and intercepted in the end zone by Talmadge Jackson. The ball was thrown again behind a wide open Jamal Miles. Then it was Casey Matthews. First down at the Duck 26. Empty backfield again. Three back to throw the ball. Pressure comes. Going to run away from it. Toward the end zone. It's intercepted. Casey Matthews goes up and gets the ball. He saw it coming. He elevated. And he picked it right out of the air. And finally, Cliff Harris. Three throws it well. Jarrell Robinson on the catch. 26-yard line. Back to throw again. Three. Looks up the middle. Nothing there. Looks to the right. Says go deep. Throws it downfield. And it is intercepted. Great play and an interception and finally thrown out of bounds in front of the Arizona, Arizona State bench. Cliff Harris, number 13. Three fourth quarter interceptions balanced out what turned out to be nearly 600 yards of offense by the Sun Devils. But the only number that matters showed Oregon 42, ASU 31, and the Ducks moved to 4-0 and continued their steady climb up the poles to number four in the nation. Number four, Oregon. Number nine, Stanford. After another packed ESPN game day show and another episode of Corso Loves the Duck, the lights came on for a primetime appearance across the nation. It didn't start out the way the Ducks would have scripted it. An efficient, balanced 11-play drive put the Cardinal up 7-3 after Andrew Luck picked his way down the field and into the Heisman discussion at the same time. Then on the kickoff, disaster strikes. Cliff Harris's hit, fumbles, and the Cardinal get the ball at the Oregon 12. Three plays later on third and eight, Luck uses his legs to silence the stadium. At that point, for many of the fans, it felt like the bad dream you can't wake up from. A Thomas interception sets up Stanford on the short field again, this time at the Oregon 44. Luck, Marisic, and Taylor behind him in the eye, wide out to the right. A double tight end, up tight end on the left hand side of the formation, and Taylor gets the ball, big hole up the middle, tackled by Nass, still on his feet, he is going to score! Taylor broke through the middle, takes it all the way, touchdown Cardinal. Got bumped hard at the line of scrimmage, but nobody wrapped him up. One play, and it's now 21-3, but still in the first quarter. 
And as Chip Kelly says, the first thing you have to do to get out of a hole you've dug for yourself is to stop digging. And Thomas with Huff in motion to the left. And Michael to his left is going to give Michael a ball. Big hole. There he goes. Across the 50. First down yardage all the way down to the Stanford. Still running. And the whistle will finally blow. First down to the 43. You might be right. Here's Thomas to throw. Over the middle, caught, balls it. No, that's going to be LT. Lavassier to it. Ooh, somebody's leaving a hand in there. Thomas, LaMichael to his left on the snap. Give it to LaMichael. He gets the hole in the first down inside of the 29. Thomas waits for the snap. Got it. Going to go back to throw. Looks on oh, the down the Wide open. That's a Jeff Mail touchdown. Little pump fake. Stanford bit, and nobody was on Jeff Mail. 21 to 10 now. The digging has stopped, and Kelly decides to do something to start actually climbing out of that hole. And Taylor furthers to way up on the 10. Here's Beard's approach to the ball, and goes with the onside kick, and Oregon got it! Stanford never saw it coming. With the offense right back on the field and the Cardinal defense looking gassed, they go right back to it. Nine yards, then eight then 14 more to D.J. Davis. Methodically down the field they go, with LaMichael James sending the Autzen crowd into that familiar roar. Second down and short, give it to LaMichael. Walk City into the end zone. Stanford wasn't ready. When you said, here they go, that's what the Stanford linemen and linebackers are going, guys, here they, oh. <laughs> Now 21 to 17, and game on. The Cardinal, when they got the ball back, continued to show their number nine ranking at the time was not high enough. Looking like a national championship contender, they punched back with a seven-play drive to go up 28-17. to Still, the Ducks continued to come after them. A heavyweight offensive fight in progress, seven plays to get into Stanford territory, and then one play to get into the end zone. Here's Thomas, Stanford 41-yard line. Wait for the ball. Got the snap. Back to throw again. Going downfield, going way down. He's got Huff wide open. Touchdown, Oregon. Touchdown, Josh Huff. That made it 28 to 24. The Cardinal added a field goal at the end of the half to make it 31 to 24. And the millions watching on TV felt the upset brewing. But not the men in the home locker room. And those millions were about to get confirmation of this Oregon team's confidence, depth, talent, and relentlessness. First possession of the second half. Somebody check what Jay's drinking down there. Here's the snap and a handoff. LaMichael, big hole up the middle. Cuts it outside, first down to the 42. Thomas going to give it to. No, he kept it, went outside 20. Inside of the 15 to the 12, the 11 yard line. Barner to his right. On step option, gonna go right. Thomas going to keep it. Oh, what a fake touchdown, Thomas. What a fake. Touchdown, Thomas. Put the ball out like he was going to get rid of it and held on to it like it was a loaf of bread and brought it right back in. 31-31. Next possession for the Cardinal. Here's that shotgun again. Back to throw. The quick throw out. Catch made. Can you get to him in time? No. It'll be... Well, the ball, ball. ball came loose. Oregon's got it. May score. Cliff Harris with the ball. Got to go. Cliff Harris at the 10. Out of bounds, and is it, it Eddie Pleasant, not Cliff Harris, and Stanford's got a man down. But it's a out of bounds at the three, I think, is where they're marking the ball. First play. Thomas, first and goal from the three. It's through in motion. Give it to uh, Michael up the middle. Touchdown. They do it right away. Where was the ball? Well, I had the binoculars, and I had to wait until he turned enough and showed me the ball. <laughs> I couldn't find it. 38-31. Next Stanford possession. There's Luck under center. His own 26. Back to throw again. Sets up. Way downfield. Going for broke. And it is intercepted at the 25-yard line. Cliff Harris went up. Said, I got this one. I got this one and just waited for it to come in. He had position on the receiver on the inside, and that's where the ball was thrown. Now Oregon's defense is finding a way while the Oregon offense gained steam. This is the first play of the fourth quarter. Here is Thomas. Well, Michael, no, that's Barner to his left now. 
And Thomas going to keep it back to throw the ball. Down to the end zone. Got him. He's got it. Touchdown, Oregon. Drew Davis. 45 to 31. 21 points in a row after trailing at halftime. Autzen as loud as it's ever been with nearly 60,000 in a frenzy. And even when the Cardinal tried to mount any kind of comeback, the Duck defense sent the message that they own the second half, once again not allowing a single point after halftime. Even when Stanford threatened, the Ducks turned them away. First down from the Duck 11. Here's Andrew Luck under center. Back to throw the ball. Looks left. Swings it to the corner for the fade, and it is... Intercepted in the end zone! Now, nearly down for the count, the offense and LaMichael James finishes him off. Here's third down and three. And LaMichael up the middle, busts it, and he's gone! LaMichael James, baby, not going to catch that man! 10-5! Statement! 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 LaMichael James! 52-31 after trailing 21-3. The numbers are staggering. LaMichael, his best day. 257 yards on 31 carries, 626 yards of total offense, 5-0, and, oh, and now number three in the nation. And while each and every member of the team is focused on winning each and every day, their fans start believing that this might be the year, that the words Ducks and National Championship game might eventually go together. Any game on the road presents its challenges, and the Ducks pull into Pullman, Washington with many of them, staying focused, taking everyone's best shot, avoiding the classic letdown after a big emotional win. Here's Thomas with Michael to his right, and he's going to pitch it to Barner coming to the right. Get a little corner, good block, needs another one, cuts it across the 40, and we'll get a first down. Michael, Thomas, Thomas back to throw. Here comes the screen, and it perfectly set up. Mail's going to get a first down, and I'm surprised he didn't get a lot more. Thomas on the snap. Give it to, no pull it, kept it. He might have a chance. He's inside of the 10, but he gets spun down to the 9, and a late flag, two, now three go in. Second to go, one yard line. Thomas LaMichael to his right. Thomas got the ball. Give it to LaMichael. Walks it in. and get it across the goal line, and Oregon has scored. After a 13-play touchdown drive to open the game, their longest of the year, and a nifty two-point conversion that would become their trademark on opening touchdowns, then Washington State came back with an eight-play drive of their own to pull within one. Then, in the blink of an eye, the day changed for good. Warner will have a chance at the goal line a yard deep. Out to the 10, go to the middle of the field, needs a block, and it's blown up, oh, and he's oh, down. The ball is loose, and Washington State will have it at the six-yard line, and Kenyon Barner is down. It, that's a scary injury of the type that ends up major concussion, possibly, but not moving at all. He got blocked. A man got blocked into him, Jerry. As Oregon players huddled and Barner's family came onto the field, the fear of the unknown gripped a team and their fans. Kenyon finally was able to stand on his own, was placed into an ambulance and taken to the hospital. The fact that the Cougars had taken possession of the ball and subsequently taken the lead was the furthest thing from anyone's mind. With all concern on Barner's well-being, there was still a football game to be played, still a championship run to try to keep intact. Fitting then that his best friend, so shaken by his injury, would be the man to put the Ducks in position to get the lead back for good. Just outside the 15-yard line. Thomas back to throw. Pressure comes, downfield wide open. LaMichael's got it. Speed, 40, 50. Boat race to the 30, to the 20. Can he do it? Yes, he will. Touchdown, Oregon. Look back at that green field and see no yellow. That means no flags, and that is a big, big answer. The 84-yard touchdown pass goes into the record books, and the quick response seemed therapeutic. The Ducks appeared to gain resolve as they awaited word of Barner's condition. The defense then with a stop, and then Cliff Harris back as the Cougars lined up to punt. Good snap, kind of a rugby-style kick. 
booms it down. Harris going to have a chance for the return. It bounces, picks it up at the 34, upfield at the 40, try to get it outside. 50, he's got some room and blockers. 30, down 20, inside 15. You betcha, touchdown, Cliff Harris. Cliff Harris. Now with a 22-14 lead after Harris's return, another challenge. Quarterback Darren Thomas made a quick run to the locker room to check on a sore shoulder. As it turned out, the Ducks would have to overcome another injury. Enter Nate Costa for his first critical series of the year. With the Ducks leading just 22 to 17 midway through the second half, championship teams seem to have moments like this. Their response says everything about them. Nate continued to work the offense down the field, and then any questions about his ability to run answered. Third very short, give it to El Costa, keeps it and got a first down. Straight arm to the 30, 25, he's at the 20, chasing him from behind and will not get to the end zone, is pushed out inside of the five yard line. And then James on for the payoff. Costa, LeMichael to his right, on the snap, give it to LeMichael, up the middle hit, and second effort will push him easily into the end zone. Oregon led 29 to 17 and the reports at halftime on Barner were that he was conscious and undergoing some tests at a local hospital. At Barton Stadium, even with that hanging over them and their starting quarterback on the bench, the focus never wavered. A quick stop by the D to start the quarter and then Costa went right back to work. Davis for 11, then 10 more on the ground into Cougar territory. LaMichael for nine and then LT for 14. The momentum and confidence that defines them starting to show. Costa waits for the snap, got it. Got to keep it himself, try to go outside, get it up. He's got the first down, he might, he will. Touchdown! Score, Nate Costa, touchdown Oregon. Quickness, decision making, a veteran quarterback. That pushed the lead to 36-17 and even after the Cougars responded with a long drive in the third to make it 36-23, it still felt safe, especially the way Costa took the reins, going 13 of 15 through the air and moving the Ducks with his feet, but also because this is a defense that still hadn't allowed a fourth quarter point. Only some uncharacteristic turnovers in the final quarter kept the score reasonably close. Sandwiched in between those turnovers, Costa hit Jeff Mayo for a 34-yard touchdown to complete the final margin, 43 to 23. James had 142 yards on the ground and another 87 through the air for his three touchdowns. Mayo finished with 119 yards receiving, and with the win combined with some favorable results around the country, history was made. For the first time in program history, the Ducks had climbed to number one. In both the AP and the USA Today coaches polls, the Ducks were the number one team in the country. When the BCS standings came out, they were slotted second, but the humans they had Oregon number one, returning home where they would emerge from that tunnel with the Harley roaring onto their home field for the first time ever as the top ranked team in the country. It had been nearly 25 years since a new program had been ranked number one. All those years of Ohio State and Florida and USC and 25 years later another program finally reaches those heights. But as Chip Kelly so clearly says, there are no trophies for 6-0, no trophies in October. So it was UCLA on a Thursday night in Eugene that was forced to bear the brunt of a supremely focused Duck team. With the nation watching once again on ESPN, it didn't take long to show that the number one team wouldn't lose on the fourth consecutive week. Michael Motion to the right now will come back, back to throw. Thomas wants it down the middle. Got him, wide open. Paulson, David, across the 30 and pulled down from the side and from behind at the 33-yard line. Is on 34-yard line on the snap. Keep it again. Going to go left, wants to throw. Downfield, and he's caught it. First down. Mail turns, spins, trying to get up, but goes down across the 35. Make that the 45. At the 41 of UCLA, Thomas. Fourth down, back to throw with time. Looks upfield, now we'll swing it out. He's got it too, LaMichael, he's got a first down down the sidelines and tackle out of bounds inside of the 20. Here's Thomas again, Ruddy, and gonna give it to LaMichael, gonna cut it up the middle, he's got a chance, he's got more than a chance. Touchdown, LaMichael James. In a blur for the Bruins, the defense quickly stopped Richard Brijo and Jonathan Franklin, and the offense went right back at it. 
picking up big chunks of yardage in the process on their way to 600 plus yards. And when the gentleman, Remini Alston, went across the goal line and then Nate Costa did it on a two point conversion, still in the first quarter, the Ducks already had all the points they would need. That didn't mean the thrills to the home crowd were over. Thomas empty backfield, nobody back there. And he's going to throw with a snap to look in the middle, down the middle. He throws down the middle. He's got his man. He's got a touchdown to Huff. Josh Huff, nobody near him. On first and goal from the six, Thomas to throw with time. Looks, 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 throws back in the end zone. Sliding touchdown to David Paulson. Sliding down. The pass perfectly thrown, and Oregon's up 28 to 3 with three and a half left here in the first half. Well, Michael to the left of Darren Thomas. On second down at about two, and keeping it, Thomas gonna go left, wants to throw it in the end zone, back in the end zone, Jeff Mail, touchdown. Thomas to his left, throws back to the middle, and a strike to Jeffrey Mail. Brejo from the gun to throw, steps back, pressure comes, it hits him and he'll go down at the six, no ball came loose, ball came loose, Oregon's football at the five. Two wide outs right. Michael to his left, give it to him, up the middle, inside, touchdown! Don't waste any time. What is that, a three-second drive? It didn't look like there was anything there from our angle, Jerry, but he just sneaks through. Then, after Alston rumbled for 42 yards and finished off the drive with a two-yard touchdown, the dust had settled. It was 53-6. to six. Oregon had completely manhandled the Bruins, holding them to 290 total yards and piling up nearly 600 yards again including a career-high 308 for Darren Thomas through the air. Ironically, the Bruins had nearly 39 minutes of possession time to Oregon's 21 minutes, showing how completely insignificant the time of possession stat is with this football team. The more telling number, the Ducks averaged a staggering eight yards per play in the game, and they ran 73 of them, running the Bruins right out of the building 60 to 13. And for maybe the first time in human history, Rick Neuheisel was left speechless, saying only, quote, that was impressive. I'll leave it at that. How times have changed. It's Oregon taking on USC as the number one team in the country. And for the first time in 20 years, that a number one team other than USC took the field at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. The battle begins, and the Trojans put together a nice drive that ends in three. The Ducks, with their first chance, answer with six. Empty backfield at the 15. Thomas now brings LaMichael back to the formation and fakes the ball. Wants He's got, him open. He got him open in the end zone. Touchdown, Jeff Mail. He was so open. Nobody near him. And then another two. Well, Oregon go for two. They look at it and they will try to go for two. They've got a man in the end zone. Touchdown, Brandon Bear. Is that the Bear? That is the Bear. His first points as a duck. In the first quarter, it became somewhat of a field position game. USC special teams with Ronald Johnson making enough plays to change the field. A pass interference call and a penalty then give USC a short field. Starting at the Oregon 28, five plays later, USC was back in front 10 to eight. In the second quarter, the momentum starts to shift as LaMichael James bursts onto the scene. Ready right away again. Thomas Ruddy gonna give it to him again. Up the middle, there's a big hole, first down 30, and he might, he's at the 10, he will score, LaMichael James. And there was Oregon's offensive play ready before USC's defense could get set. Trailing 15 to 10, the Trojans put together their best drive of the day. Matt Barkley mixing the pass and the run, converting on third down, once at midfield, and then again at the Oregon eight. With USC out in front, the Coliseum was rocking. A stop and they had the ball back with a chance to extend the lead. During the bye week before the game, the Trojans liked Oregon's no huddle shotgun spread offense. So they decided to put in a few plays of their own to run against the Ducks. This time, it didn't work out so well. Barkley on second and 10. Snap, ball is snapped, it's on the ground. Oregon might have it. They do, Ducks get the fumble recovery. Barkley was not ready for the snap. Can you believe that Masiko Lacombo shot through and got it? And the Duck offense made them pay immediately. Thomas, three receivers all out to the right. The ball at the 45 of USC. And now, 
Wilson in motion left. Give it to no back to throw play fake. Want to go deep downfield. He's got a mail. Waits for it. Touchdown, Oregon! Bobbles the ball as he's diving. Bobbles it, keeps it off the turf, and rolls over with a football. And we had to wait for the referee to make the call. With the catch of the year, Oregon was back in front 22 17. And the defense seemed to have the Trojans' number now, forcing a couple of quick punts. That means the Trojans had to kick the ball to Cliff Harris. Good snap, and he will punt it. And he booms a nice wobbly spot. Well, Harris going to get a chance. 20, 30 on the run. 40, trying to cut it outside. Needs a block. He's at midfield. Sideline left. 40, stutter step. Inside of the 30. Tries to go back the other way now. And down. Again, the Ducks strike. Thomas, wait for the snap. Got it. Back to throw the ball. Down the middle, wide open. He's got it to Lavoisier, two and eight. He's got a touchdown. Lavoisier, two and eight. We love him. We call him LT. And he was wide open down the seam, and Thomas's pass was perfect. With the defense playing well, holding the Trojans again, this time with another Cliff Harris interception at the one-yard line with just 33 seconds to play in the half, every other team in the country would take a knee, but not Oregon. Thomas from the end zone where he stands. He's now going under center. A Michael to his left on the snap. Give no back to throw the ball. Way down the middle, wide open. Huff's got it. Huff stops at the 40, around the outside left of the 50. And we'll go out of bounds over the 42-yard line. Into USC territory, a stunned crowd was brought back to life only because the Trojan D made a play and caused a Thomas fumble. As the third quarter began, a couple of things went the Trojans' way. A batted ball ends up in the hands of Jarrell Casey at the Duck 21. And after a face mask, USC only needed to go five yards for a touchdown. Then after forcing an Oregon punt, Ronald Johnson takes it to the 21, add on a holding call, and again, USC uses a very short field to cash in and take the lead back at 32 to 29. At times, it looked like the Oregon offense could move at will. And a Thomas pass to mail for 30 yards put Oregon back on top, this time for good. Need to get to the 17. Thomas. USC shows blitz. Here they come. Steps up, throws. It's caught. Mail. Going to get a first down and more. 10. Turn the corner. Touchdown, Oregon. Touchdown, Jeff Mail. The blitz came. Offensive line picked it up. With a 36-32 lead, the defense forced a quick three and out and back with the ball. The Oregon offense confidently remain in control with an 11 play 82 yard drive. It took just more than four minutes, which seems like an eternity in duck years, and the result, a 43 to 32 lead. On Oregon's next possession after Barkley was intercepted by John Boyette in the end zone, the Trojans, sometimes faithful, hit the turnstiles. What they missed, they'd already seen enough of. James for 10, James for 45 more, then for five, then seven, then eight more for the touchdown. 53-32, 239 yards rushing for LaMichael James and three touchdowns, Heisman-like numbers for sure. For the Oregon sophomore, a resounding statement that the balance of power had shifted in the Pac-10. With 600 total yards, the Ducks had gained more than a half a mile of offense in the last two meetings combined. And with 53 points, the second most the Trojans had ever given up at home, ever. On to 8-0, and and also on to number one everywhere, not just in the human polls, but now the one that really matters, the BCS. As Oregon bursts out of the tunnel once again as the nation's number one, the first ever crowd of more than 60,000 packed Gotson for a little visit from one of their hated rivals, the Washington Huskies. But what fans expected didn't materialize early, as the Ducks' first three possessions either ended in a punt or giving up the ball on downs. It wasn't as if the Huskies were doing any damage of their own on offense, managing just one first down in the quarter. But a scoreless tie after one had a few folks scratching their heads. And then, as each team traded field goals to start the second quarter, there was some wondering whether this would be the day of the mammoth upset. But during this run, every time fans start to think something is wrong, the Ducks show them emphatically what's right. 
Thomas ready for it, his own 41 yard line, and gonna play fake, want to roll right to throw. Open, gonna throw it down, it's caught, and Tuane is gonna get it upfield and first down inside of the 45. Well, Michael sets up to the right of Thomas now, just behind him, and we'll get the ball. Gonna go outside, cut up, nice crease, cuts it back in the 35, still on his feet, stutter step into the 30, first down. And second down, Thomas gonna roll left to throw, gonna keep it, gonna run, gonna get a chance for the first down and get it, and out of bounds. Two receivers out to the right. Jeff Ramel way out right. Thomas on the snap. Going to keep it. Going to go left. Going to get to the five. Going to get to the three. Needs a block. Can't quite get to the goal line, but a late, late flags come out. Thomas with Michael to his left again. Two receivers out to the right. Thomas on the snap. Give it to him again. Lowers his head and goes in. No doubt about it this time. Offensive line won that battle rather easily, and it's a 9-3 ball game. And then another extra point try. Snap good placement is given to Beard right up the middle for the two-point conversion. <laughs> That's a different wrinkle. After taking the 11-3 lead, the offense went to the sidelines starting to click. And when they got the ball back, it was lights out for Washington. Thomas on first down at the Husky 34, first down. On the snap, back to throw again with good time. Drifts out to the right. Now will run, going to go upfield and cut it outside. 20, he might go! He's inside, touchdown Oregon! I thought he was going out of bounds. Maybe the Huskies did too, and he saw a crease. Even though Washington tried to claw back, at every turn the Ducks had an answer. Pooches it again, this will be Huff this time, at the 15, left side of the 20, up a crease to the 30, cuts it back against the grain, at the 35, now the 40, needs a block downfield, 40, the Huskies, down the right side, 30, cuts it back, 20, inside of the 15, 10, and eight out of bounds at the seven yard line. And with that field position, it only took one play. Here's first and goal from the six yard line. Play action, gonna go left, wanna throw it to the end zone, touchdown, Jeff Mayo. It was Mayo's seventh straight game with a touchdown catch, and it made it 25 to 13. When Oregon got the ball back again, the offense moved into position, but had to settle for a 26-yard field goal attempt. On this play, disaster strikes. Nate Costa, who had been through so much during his Oregon career, had the snap go through his hands, and as he tries to get the ball out, he goes down with another knee injury. This time, it's a career-ending injury. For the team leader, beloved by Oregon fans, the break couldn't have been worse. Costa, though, has secured a special place in Oregon football history. After the injury, the Ducks continued to roll, almost as if to honor their fallen teammates. Wait for the snap high, but he'll go back, play fake, throw it downfield, got mail. 50, trying to go outside and out of bounds. And Thomas going to give it to him again. Oh, this is LaMichael this time. Gets stuff, comes outside, needs a block. 10 inside of the 5, dives for the pylon. That's a touchdown, unless they say he stepped out of bounds. No, it's a touchdown. Second down at 7, Oregon. Thomas on the snap. And it on, it keeps it, going to get it outside. Almost gets away, does. 40 inside down to the 30-yard line. Thomas on the snap, got it, gonna give it to him. He'll keep it this time again, trying to go outside. Put a little move on, oh, five, touchdown, Darren Thomas! Touchdown, Darren Thomas! Nice punt deep, way back inside of the 10. Harris takes it at the five. Nowhere to go, gonna go outside, try to get the corner, does. 20, down the sideline, 30. Needs a block, the punter to beat, and that's it. 50, down the sideline, the 30. He might make it, stops and changes direction to the 20 and down from behind. Right out of gas. 16 yard line. Here we go again. Thomas on the snap, give it to Michael, walks it in. Oh, walk in the park. How do you do? On second down, actually about 11 now, and Give it to Barner, gonna go outside, there he goes, inside of the 10, touchdown, Kenyon Barner. Welcome back, Kenyon Barner, good to see you, baby. When the demolition was complete, the Ducks had exploded for 40 points in the span of less than two quarters. But with the 53-16 route of the Huskies, Oregon had won seven in a row against the one-time bully, all by more than 20 points. Oregon senior class now equaling the school record for most wins by any class in history. And for the first time in 115 years of football, the Ducks move to 9-0.
Now, talk of a potential national championship opportunity really starts to heat up as the Ducks head to Berkeley to take on the California Bears. Cal, a tough team to figure out. Terrible on the road, great at home so far in 2010. On the opening drive, Thomas looked like he had mail over the middle, but as he was held up, the ball sailed over his head. It was clear that Chip Kelly did not want to give the ball up so early. Faced with a fourth and two at midfield, the Bears stopped LaMichael James and with that momentum took the ball down the field and in for a 7 to nothing lead. During the day, no question the Oregon offense had trouble getting the motor started. Cal continued to play excellent inspired defense. This became the kind of game all championship teams have. On the road, inspired team against number one. And once again, the special teams give Oregon just the spark they need. Great putt, high and deep. Harris all the way back to the 36, got a chance for a return. Trying to get the corner, gets a little bit, 50, cuts inside of the 50 to the 40. Sell the speed, he might make it. He's hit the 20, needs a block, inside of the 5. Touchdown, Cliff Harris! Touchdown, Oregon! Brian Anger out punted his coverage. With the crowd still buzzing after Harris's record return, the Ducks line up for two. And Oregon goes for two, Jerry, and they get it. It doesn't matter whether it's Nate Costa or Jackson Rice, they run the swing and gate and get the two-point conversion. At that time, nobody could know how critical that two-point conversion would be. And after halftime, all indications were that the Ducks would do what they normally do and bury teams in the second half. And after a Cal fumble, their first turnover of the day, it looked like it would happen again. From the 29 of Cal. LT in motion left, back to throw, Thomas with time, throws it right, Mail's got it, 10-5, touchdown Oregon, Jeff Mail. Then after a quick three and out, forced by a tough aggressive Oregon defense, they were in position again, but missed their second field goal of the day, the door was left open for the Bears. One of the best. Here's Thomas back to throw on first down. Pressure comes, ball knocked out of his hands. They don't it's show it. It's an incomplete pass. It's a fumble, and that's a touchdown, Cal. I kept looking at the white hat, and I'm thinking his arm's going forward, but I think the ball got knocked out. The play was reviewed and upheld, and now the Bears trailed by just two, and they lined up to go for the tie. But the play was never close, and the Ducks cling to a two-point lead. The Bears start the fourth quarter down where the Oregon fans are. More than 15,000 down in that end zone screaming for their team. And as Cal goes to take the lead, it's the kicker they get to. A false start nullifies the first kick that goes through the uprights. The second try after the penalty from 29 yards out. And snap good, placement good, and the kick is up. And no, we missed it! He pushed it to the right. After the game, Tavecchio admitted that the crowd helped cause the penalty. The Ducks retain the lead. After an exchange of punts, the clock read 925. On the sideline, Chip Kelly called his offense around. In that huddle, a defining moment took place, telling his team they would remember this drive for the rest of their lives. It starts at their own 20. A couple of first downs, and James goes to the sideline to have his leg worked on. In comes Kenyon Barner with some fresh legs. Barner goes to his left, comes back, gets the ball going right, get outside, first down, dives all the way inside of the 46. The clock moving, now under four minutes, the Bears desperately trying to get the ball back for one final chance to send the college football world upside down. But Oregon more determined, back in, injured, comes James. The offensive line, the cumulative effect wearing down the Cal defense, getting great push up front. James for four, then for five on third down, then six more, down to two minutes and counting. And now with a third and five at the Cal 19. LaMichael to his left. Now to his right as he sets up to the right. And give it to LaMichael. Coming left. Trying to go up the middle. Nothing there. Cut it back up. Nice run inside of the 20, 19 yard line. In the end, they couldn't stop him. The drive that Kelly visualized with his team on the sideline happened. 18 plays, 65 yards, and the final 925 off the clock. In the biggest moment, on the biggest stage, doing it in a way they hadn't been forced to do it, by grinding it out, by forcing their will with the game on the line, by creating a moment they and Duck fans will remember forever. The close call at Cal had the nation buzzing. The national discussion was about what was wrong with Oregon, or that the blueprint to stopping the Duck offense was found. Blueprint? 
Perhaps Arizona didn't get the delivery. With Barner beside him now. Nail in motion a little bit toward the formation. Back to throw the ball. Oh, wide open downfield. Paulson, he's got it. He is touchdown Oregon. Oh, you can see it when he left the line of scrimmage. They forgot him. Here's Thomas. Got to give it to Michael. Get go outside. Cut it behind a block. Still on his feet. Boom. Hit at the 20 and down to the 18 yard line. Barner beside Thomas to his right. Paulson in motion to the right. On the snap, back to throw, play action, look to the end zone, going to loft it, and it is caught in the back of the end zone by Jeff Mayhill. Oh, holy cow, did he thread that ball through there. Home receiver to the right, that's Michael comes back into the side, Thomas, and, and here's the option, going left, pitches in it back, and Hoff's going to try to get the corner first down, 30, cuts it back, still on his feet, 40, if he's got the speed, he might, I think he will, he's at the 30, the 20, the 10, you betcha he will. Touchdown, Josh Huff, touchdown, Oregon! This game, for at least the Rose Bowl and the Pac-10 Championship, followed the familiar script. A close game early that turns into a rout. Another coronation for back-to-back -back Pac-10 Championships. The first time in history securing consecutive BCS Bowl appearances. Thomas, a couple of guys in the backfield with him. And we'll take the snap and keep it. Got an option right, keeps it. Goes outside, 15, 10. He's got a chance. Maybe he's got more than a chance. He scores. Darren Thomas made it look easy on the option, keeps it. And Oregon builds the lead to 26 19. Is ready. He looks over the defense. Wants the ball, got it. And they back to throw off play action. Looks back to his left, throws to the end zone. He's got him. Touchdown. Through Davis. DJ Oregon scores again. 36 seconds left, and it's a 33-20 too late here in the third quarter. It all felt so predictable. An offense that couldn't be stopped. An opposing defense sucking wind. An Oregon defense dominating the second half. Five consecutive possessions, the D stifles the Wildcats. Five consecutive possessions, touchdowns. I can't remember what he calls it when they look to the sideline. First down. On the give, LaMichael going right, cut it back, 10, inside, 5, 3, 2, touchdown, LaMichael James! This one's going to go high and deeper, all the way back to the one-yard line. Turn it to the 10, middle of the field, trying to go outside, ball's oh, loose! Ball's loose! I think Oregon's got it. There were no Wildcats there when the ball was circled up. Ball's in motions to the left side. Give the ball to LaMichael, inside, 5, 3, 2, Thomas, wait for the snap, got it, give it to LaMichael, yep, yep, and it races any doubt, right up the middle easily, touchdown Oregon, LaMichael James in his second score of the game. The final 48 to 29, Pac-10 champions for 11 games, more than 120 practices, the Ducks have won the day at each and every moment, but this was different, a year ago, the duck floated in a sea of roses. On this day, with the conference championship secured, not a single rose, not one, a symbol of how things have changed. And among the team, no sense whatsoever of finality, no championship shirts, no celebration. There was one more day to win. To Corvallis, some calling it the biggest civil war ever played. Clearly for Oregon, it was. A win and an undefeated season, a spot in the national championship game. 12 wins for the first time in program history. Yes, all of it. But big two, simply because it's the Beavers. The first play, a pretty good indication of what this day would be like. First play from scrimmage. Back and play fake to throw a little play action. Hit and the ball pops into the air, incomplete. And Katz is down. And Katz is down, and he is not getting up. The Ducks were not perfect early. After forcing a punt on that opening drive, Cliff Harris fumbled on the punt, but the defense had his back. Katz on the snap, straight drop to throw. And, oh, man, the ball's popped up into the air and intercepted by the Ducks at the 30. How about the interception by Terrell Turner? The Oregon offense, with their first possession, clearly starts to show a speed difference in the game but a drive filled with big chunks of yardage ends with the ball on the turf. Oregon State then put together their best drive of the game. 15 plays later, one of them a third and 17 conversion, Rodgers gives the Beavers the lead.
but this Duck team has been here so many times before. Well, Michael on the right side of Thomas, and he'll give him the ball. Well, Michael going left, got a nice big chunk, 40, down the sideline, 30, inside of the 20, and he'll step out of bounds. Here's Thomas, and the Ducks ready again at the 18. Give it to him again, going to go right, try to get it outside. Drag down and gets, oh, Barner gets away and goes inside of the 14-yard line. On first and goal from the four-yard line. Give it, nope, back to throw, looking left, now over the middle, throw to the right. He's got Barner, touchdown Oregon! Kenyon Barr swings out of the backfield. Everything's going left, and Barner leaked out right. Even though they missed the extra point, it was how they were gaining yards that put Duck fans a little bit at ease. After another Duck drive and a field goal from Rob Beard, the defense forces a three and out, and the Ducks start to run their rivals ragged. There's LeMichael in the backfield, and he will get the ball. Going to go right, cut it outside, gets a little room. Here we go again. 30 inside a block, outside of 40. He goes down across the 40. Thomas, almost looks like an inverted wish, but keeps an option. Going to pitch it back to Marta. Coming left, 45-50. Good block downfield, and to go out of bounds. Davis in the backfield now, and it'll be option. Here's the pitch going right in reverse. Huff with a block. Oh, great block downfield, 40, 30. Cuts inside and inside of the 25 to the 23-yard line. Thomas on second and nine. Gives it to Barner going right. Gets it upfield. First down, 10-yard line inside of the eight and down. Here's first down and goal from the eight-yard line. Thomas, LeMichael beside him now. We'll get the ball. Going to come left. Got some room. Can he get the corner? 10, 5, 3. He's in for the touchdown. LeMichael James just kind of cruises in on the left-hand corner. Up 16-7, to seven, the momentum was clearly with the Ducks, seeming to show no effects of the pressure of this game. With the ball back, they marched right down the field again, all the way inside the five-yard line. But the Beaver D, gassed, rose for a big stop, a critical stop. And when Beard missed the chip shot field goal, the Ducks came up empty on the drive and went to the locker room with a nine-point lead. Out of halftime, the Beavers seemed to gain some momentum. Oregon finally being slowed down a bit. Oregon State ready to take possession around midfield. Chip Kelly had a different idea. Aldonado waits for the snap. No, it's a fake. Oregon runs it first down up the middle. 40 near midfield. 45, 40, 30. Inside of the 30 to the 25 on the 20 yard line. Inside of the 15 and finally out of bounds inside the 10 yard line. With the big play, no doubt the Ducks would cash it in. Here's third down and six. Back to throw. Pressure comes. Here's the screen. It's caught by Davis. Get it upfield if he can. Inside of the 10. He's going to score. Drew Davis. And they finish the job this time. And Oregon is on top, 22 to 7. Up 23 to 7, it felt like the Ducks were close to the knockout punch. But the Beavers continued to punch back. Oregon State with a short field. Then a kickoff that pins Oregon deep. They get it back. A march right down the field again with a chance to make it 23 to 17. But the defense does it again in the red zone. And they take it to the fourth quarter. After the field goal on that drive, the Ducks regain their dominance with a big third down and a clear pass interference call that brings him into Beaver territory. Kenyon Barner finishes it. Two receivers out to the right, Mayle and Davis. And high snap, give it to Barner again. Nice scoots through, he's gonna score! Barner, touchdown Oregon! Goes over the right side and speed shoots him through the hole. At 30 to 13, it felt safe. But just to make sure, clock down to 722 remaining. Back to throw. Cats. Little pressure, but dumps it over the middle, and it's high. And intercepted. Ducks have the ball at the 50. Boyette has got it. John Boyette tackle inside of the 44-yard line. On first down, back to throw the ball. Looking, wants to go deep down right side, gets the mail inside of the 30. Curls inside of the 20 and inside of the 18-yard line. Here's Thomas. LeMichael to his left on the snap. Give it to him again up the middle. He's going to score. LeMichael James takes it right up the middle, and that's the statement you needed. And I'm not going to say it yet, but doggone it, with 427 left, you're getting closer to the prize. With that touchdown, 37 to 13. After a late Beaver touchdown, 37 to 20. All season long, this Oregon defense only allowed 24 points in the fourth quarters. A phenomenal number. The celebration in Corvallis on. The Ducks streaming to their fans in the corner of the end zone. And fans everywhere. 114 years they've waited at Oregon. 
is going to play in the national championship game. Two, one, it's official. Can you believe the magical season this has become? And it's not over. Oregon and their fans, their team, the band, all down on the corner of the end zone, celebrating, congratulating each other, and living in the moment. And somewhere down in that humanity, a soaking wet Chip Kelly is talking to the media about his team and what they have accomplished. Unbelievable to have been a part of this. Oh my gosh. 12 and 0, undefeated season, Pac-10 champions, championship game, how far they've come. Now this group and every fan through all those years who sat in Autzen, who bought a ticket and screamed their head off, bought a t-shirt, any show of support. This season, this team taking it finally to the next level on the foundations of many. This team on their way to the championship game. This wasn't one for the ages, this was the one for the ages.